So when 2023 began, I felt like I'd reached a crossroads. I'd moved back to San Diego a few years earlier, and my life was pretty good, all things considered. But I didn't really feel like I was living life enough on my own terms. I mean, I don't feel like I could ever really let go, I said over coffee with a friend. I want to feel strong, and I want to feel powerful in this body, and I usually don't. My friend eyed me up and down. Girl, (laughs) you are a powerlifting professor who is confident and absurd. You're basically like if the Hulk decided to wear like those little bowlers and be a hipster. (laughs) How do you not feel like a powerful motherfucker? I mean, I shrugged. I, I just knew that honestly, I didn't. I mean, yeah, I was strong and, but being queer and black and bigger in San Diego also makes you feel weirdly invisible. Living in San Diego, a land of perpetual chill, where nice white surfers slash real estate agents (laughs) lived and dined out on a cookie cutter type of body left me always feeling not enough. And, you know, talking with my friend, I had to confess that despite being a hipster beefosaurus with supreme uh, extrovert confidence, I didn't feel powerful. Years of evangelical upbringing that left me suspicious of joy in my body certainly didn't help either. I'd been taught that Jesus, <laughs> while very loving, was a bit of a toxic monogamist and was uncomfortable with me finding joy in myself or others outside of him. And even though I'd left a lot of that behind, I still felt like I was playing it safe in the over a decade since I'd come out as a spicy bisexual. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, so. So, my friend locked his eyes on me and said, it sounds to me like you need to find that power, boo. What are you going to do about it? Well, I said, sipping from my coffee cup, pinky up, like the powerful yet classy lady that I am. This year, I'm going to try some new fucking shit. So first, I decided maybe to open up the way I thought about relationships. I'd been monogamous by default, But I figured, new year, new rules. I started trying to meet and date polyamorous folks and to try and learn new forms of loving and being. And I learned a lot in this weird spree of dating over the next six weeks as I met people of all genders, ages, identities, and backgrounds. I met a lovely tech bro who walked everywhere (laughs) to reduce his carbon footprint. And he was like deeply optimistic about people without actually being a total Pollyanna. I have never had so many conversations with somebody who earnestly listens to political podcasts. So much Ezra Klein. Um, I spent time with an incredibly anxious Lebanese academic who baked delicious pastries and would recite Arabic poetry in fragments between kisses. I went out with this hilarious black woman who would only respond to my texts with quotes from 90s R&B songs. (laughs) My favorite was when I asked if she wanted to go out on one particular night and she just texted, just wanna be on my own, don't take it personal. (laughs) Wasn't even mad, wasn't even mad. (laughs) I wanted to see who and how I could be in each of these new configurations. And none of them morphed into something long-term, but they showed me glimpses of like vistas in a far off future. They felt like destinations passing by on this beautiful train trip. What ended up though, sticking for me, was kink. That's right. So, I'd always been interested in kink in theory, but I'd never really spent much time exploring it. Getting a doctorate, learning six languages, being a queer black person, Friends, that takes a terrifying presence of mind and will. I'd always felt like I'd been fighting every step of the way to make the world happen 
around me. And kink? Kink offered a powerful way of reimagining my own fraught relationship to power. What would it mean to not always fight? To not have to be on top of everything and be funny and witty and wear a cute outfit where your tits look good for vamp. <laughs> tell you. So, I signed up for a men's rope tying class. I mean, if you're gonna play with losing control, you might as well make the metaphor blindingly obvious. I was terrified the first day that I would somehow fuck up or not be good enough. And my palms were so sweaty as I carried the rope in my incongruous Carmen San Diego tote bag. <laughs> I'm super cool, guys. So I spent weeks in this class learning how to tie ropes up, down, left, right. It was like a very slutty Boy Scout camp. <laughs> Fred, the leader of the class, had this fancy curled mustache that made him look vaguely like a World War I emperor. <laughs> he was clad in leather, and he laughed this like loud laugh until he was in rope tying Dom persona, and then he got really serious. And I have to admit, it turned me on a little bit. <laughs> like, I wanted his attention, and I wanted, I wanted to be a good boy. A little bit. So Fred used me as an example for the class more than once. He tied loops and knots across my chest, my arms, my ass, my legs. And I felt the fibers slide across my flesh. And they felt far more freeing than restricting. And my brain which always raced with thoughts and fears and self-doubt and self-loathing, finally screeched to a halt. My world was the rope, the soft scrape of thread on skin and the quietness of waiting for Daddy Fred's instructions. <laughs> yes, sir. I breathed as he dragged the rope across me. And I enjoyed being held in place, my body being corralled into obedience, and my brain finally, finally forced into silence. There was something so cliche and so wonderful about being turned on by this type of authority. My father had been a narcissist and a violent disciplinarian who enjoyed yelling and passing the odd punch my way when I was a kid. It made him feel powerful, and it made me feel small. I was an 80s master class in long sleeves and saying I walked into doors. But this, this felt different. I felt finally in control. I started practicing extra with rope. Fred noticed. <laughs> so Fred took me aside one day after class and his dark brown eyes twinkled. You're really into this, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought about like joining a leather community? You know, there's one specifically for men of color, Onyx. It meets at a bar in LA. Of course, the next Onyx event took place on Easter Sunday. <laughs> so I walked into the bar in a tight black shirt, leather vest, uh, and some short shorts. It was packed with beautiful brown men, most of them bigger and bulkier like me, and each of them just feeling comfortable. Now, the bar hosted a huge outdoor patio with a rope and a kink demo stage set off to the side that I eyed eagerly. I made eye contact with a barrel-chested Latino man covered in hair and tattoos. He grinned at me beneath a bandana and two silver dollar-sized nipple rings that glinted in the afternoon sun as he worked to set up the stage, which boasted a really large St. Andrew's cross. 
Hi! I said, fuck. Okay, shit. That's not kink. <laughs> fuck. Shit. Uh, try that the fuck again, I said. Okay. Uh, hey. I said, with as much borrowed butchness as I could offer. To his credit, he did not actually laugh in my face. I, uh, huh, huh. I'm TJ? This looks really fucking cool. I said, giving it away. Hey, TJ. I'm Carlos. He grinned with this half smile that promised way more than I was even remotely prepared for. And his pecs flexed and his muscles and his arms tightened as he curled up some rope and I swallowed instinctively. Why don't you try it out? You know that's why you're here. <laughs> what the fuck, I thought. As I slipped out of my shirt and my vest and my shorts, I was now clad only in a black jockstrap, knee socks, and some black Converse All-Stars. I looked like the world's horniest and gayest rugby player, which, as we know, is just a redundant statement. So, <laughs> so. Carlos leaned over me, and I could smell his aftershave against my neck as he tied a blindfold tight against my eyes. I felt the rough wood against my arms and chest and I heard the leather flogger as it left his holster. Are you ready? <laughs> he asked. Yeah. <laughs> I breathed, my voice husky with want and excitement. The crack came a second later in the air and then a hot pinprick of sensation on my back bloomed like a wildflower. Another on my left butt cheek, the tendrils unfurled across my side. And another erupted in the meat of my exposed thigh. And it felt fucking wonderful. <laughs> the pain was coming, but my God, it was not random. I had chosen this. I had embraced this. And I felt in that moment the circuits of my brain rewiring as the, plain, as the pain blossomed one moment after another. But the pain was not an unpredictable horror. It was an invited moment of anticipation, an opportunity to claw through years of shame, of fear, of hating this big, black, queer body. I was also having a resurrection moment of sorts this Easter. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> the cracks came faster flooding my body with sensation. I whimpered. I felt a cooling hand on my back. Carlos had stopped, and his breath was in my ear. You are such a good boy. <laughs> you are incredible. You're doing amazing. Are you okay? I felt overwhelmed with pleasure and with freedom with joy, with power, with power that I had chosen. I breathed out through my clenched teeth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I need to stop now. <laughs> Cooling hands caressed my body, held me in a firm grip, let me unclench into them and feel safe. I breathed a few more beats, and I felt joy radiate through my body. And the blindfold came off, and I blinked in the golden afternoon light. I sank into Carlos's arms and realized 
that the whole patio was full of men cheering me on, <laughs> applauding what they'd just seen. TJ Talley, everybody! <laughs> <laughs>